Hello, this is Ed Zowler, Villa Realty Group, uh, doing another video uh, about Chinese drywall, kind of doing a new update. Uh, now is in, uh, we're in April 2011. There's a lot of misconceptions, a lot of myths out there, and a lot of missed facts that a lot of people are not experiencing because they just don't know or they're listening to what they read in Google or in the newspapers. I'm kind of here to explain a little bit about what I know and um, go over a little bit about what I go over with you when we are going in these homes that have Chinese drywall. Tell you a little bit more about them. I've kind of teamed up with Eagle Eye Home Inspection, a local home inspection uh, service that's here in Cape Coral, Florida as well, and kind of to tackle this issue. Now, very first thing about Chinese drywall uh, that you need to know are the myths and the facts. Well, go over myth number one, rotten egg smell. Very few some, but very few, and I'll explain why a little bit later, uh, smell like rotten eggs. That's not the smell at all you're looking for. Uh, myth out there, only homes built in 2006 have it. That is wrong. Um, only newer homes can have it or new construction. Again, that's a wrong fact. Um, that is more of a, that is a myth. Can uh, people think that it can be 100% corrected with a remediation or by ripping out the drywall? And that is a myth as well. Uh, people know the company, K-N-A-U-F, Knopf, they're the only supplier of bad drywall. I've heard that. Uh, that also is a myth. Uh, and replacing it corrects the problem of, like, replacing all the drywall corrects it. That's a myth as well. And then one that's really popular myth out there is that well water can turn wires black and mimic Chinese drywall. And that is 100% incorrect. Now, the facts. Many have no smell at all, and it does not smell like rotten eggs. I've been into many, many of these. I've walked with an inspector who goes into hundreds of these a month, and that is not the smell you're looking for. Well water smells like rotten eggs, and most of the homes that are on well and septic up in the North Cape or in an undeveloped area of the Cape, you're going to smell that rotten egg smell when the sprinklers go off, or if you run the water, you're going to smell sulfur. Uh, but uh, as far as that smell, sulfur smell, but that's not the smell you're looking for. Um, the fact is that any home can have it. I've seen a 1983 home that had it well before they're even making it because someone in 2004, 5, or 6 uh, did a remodel uh, or replaced some walls. Uh, there is no known cure to date for eliminating the gas. That is not, it's not the drywall that's the enemy, it's the gas that it emits. And many manufacturers import it, and not just from China. Actually have seen drywall saying made in the USA. That was a manu uh, the distributor, but they were distributing this the bad drywall. And replacing the drywall does not remove the gas that absorbs into anything in the house that is porous. We'll go over a little bit of that later. Okay, so an explanation here. Okay, Chinese drywall is nasty stuff. It admits numerous gases, not just one, that have harmful results. The four gases that it admits are hydrogen sulfide, carbonyl sulfide, carbon disulfide, and trace amounts of strontium sulfate. Now, don't have to be a chemical engineer to understand what these things are. I'm going to go over a little bit briefly with you. Hydrogen sulfide gas is a highly toxic and flammable gas, which is heavier than air and accumulates at the bottom of poorly ventilated spaces. It's pungent at first, or in a lot of cases it's not if it's not very toxic, but it qu quickly deadens the sense of smell in your nose and you won't be able to smell it after a couple minutes in the house. Comparable with that of hydrogen cyanide gas, it is classified as a poison. It reacts with water vapor and ultimately forms highly corrosive sulfuric acid, you've heard of that before, which attacks the metal and it oxidizes it. So we're going a little deep here, but that's what happens. It reacts with water vapor, aka humidity, which we have down here in southwest Florida, or water in the air, and forms this sulfuric acid, which oxidizes the metal. Carbonyl sulfide is potentially dangerous and could ignite and cause a fire, just like iron disulfide can. Carbon disulfide also has, that actually has a radish smell, sweet smell to it. Nothing at all like eggs. And it evaporates at room temperature. Of course, you're not going to see it. And the vapor is more than twice as heavy as air. It easily explodes in air and is highly flammable. Strontium, uh, strontium sulfate is a material that can emit corrosive gases in moist air and only smells when it's heated. So if you go into an air-conditioned home that doesn't have heat to it, strontium sulfate will kind of lay dormant. 
but corrosion of most metal surfaces within as little as a few months will occur with any kind of heat whatsoever. Now the smell. These gases range in smell. Well water smells like strong, rot, strong rotten egg smell due to the sulfur in the well water that comes out of the well. If you just went to a house that just irrigated, such as the irrigation water pumped right out of the wells, uh, 200 feet below the helm, are going to smell like rotten eggs. That's not the smell you're looking for with Chinese drywall. In its dry state, which most homes, you're going to walk in, it's not going to be wet, the drywall, it gives off a faint firecracker smell very faint like i lit off a firecracker five minutes before you walked into the house that's what you're looking for not eggs firecracker gunpowder chemically smell when it's in its wet state like a humid home say a home that doesn't have an ac unit and it's getting off a lot of humidity like in the summer it gives off a soury smell to it like if you were driving by a petroleum refinery or a well uh, area uh, that's the rotten egg smell you smell but only in homes that have a wet if the gas is in its wet state or in a humid home. Now the health damages. Causes immediate olfactory fatigue, which means your nose gets used to it really fast, meaning the sensory cells in your nose stop sending messages to your brain that you're smelling something weird. People can no longer smell the substance, even though it's present, it can happen within minutes. But a lot of people within the minutes to hours, depends on how sensitive you are, your eyes are going to start getting irritated, you'll get a sore throat, your throat can even start blowing up, stuffy nose, a cough, and a headache. Within days to years of exposure, and that's just when the first couple hours, within days to years of the exposure, fatigue, irritability, poor memory, dizziness, and shorter breath are all symptoms of inhaling a sulfide gas. Now to the home, two gases in particular, being hydrogen sulfide gas and strontium sulfate gases, can and will attack metal compounds like silver and copper in the home. It corrodes air condenser coils, wiring pipes, fixtures and artifacts in the home as well. Pretty much anything that's metally is going to have an oxidation to it. This can cause shorts in electrical systems, a breakdown of piping causing water infiltration in the home and oxidation of the metal. Hydrogen sulfide breaks down into sulfuric acid to do this. Hydrogen sulfide gas needs uh, water, needs humidity to do that with and that's what attacks. Now testing. A home inspector is your safety net in identifying Chinese drywall. That's why we insist that you get a home inspector to inspect any home. I don't care if it was built in 1999. If there's any permit done in 2004, 5, 6, 7, and they did any kind of remodel, you're going to want to do it regardless. The only great thing about Chinese drywall is it does not hide itself very well. Usually you can pick up multiple pieces of visual evidence, and they're very easy to see if you know what you're looking for. Oxidation of metal components throughout the home is common. A certified home inspector who is licensed, bonded, and insured, and registered currently within the state as an inspector is the only source you should use. Fly-by-nighters and rehabbers should not be used as home inspectors. The gun test. Okay, so there's a guy, uh, not a guy, but there's companies out there that bought a chemical gun. A gun that's usually used on soil to blast the soil and say, oh, look at that trace elements and try to find certain types of chemicals. They use this gun meant for soil and call it a Chinese drywall test. Well, the element they're looking for is strontium sulfate. Now, of the four gases, this particular gas comes in trace amounts, and according to the NACHI, which is the National Association of Certified Home Inspectors, strontium sulfate needs to react with an acid to release its harmful gases. And not all Chinese drywall test positive for the strontium sulfate. Remember, there are four things that can be in Chinese drywall to make bad things happen. So they're only looking for one of the four, and if it has very trace amounts or very low quantities of it, but still has high levels of hydrogen sulfide gas emanating from it, the test is going to be wrong. Drywall is very neutral to alkaline. Now, remember, strontium sulfate needs acid. If drywall is neutral to alkaline, uh, or base, if you're into pH uh, uh, scales, making it, it's going to make it very difficult to calculate. How is the acid reaction going to occur? Where is this uh, chemical going to get this acid to start releasing its uh, chemical? In fact, most of the bad drywall has low traces of this gas, making this test very non-conclusive. 
Uh, so just a little bit about the gun test. Gun test is not 100% accurate. A pretty much a nice visual inspection from a certified licensed bond insured home inspector is a safe way to kind of protect yourself. Of course, the only way to truly guarantee it would be cutting a piece of drywall from every wall in the home and sending out to a laboratory it can get very costly, very expensive. But I put my faith in the inspectors that know what to look for that are just that, inspectors. Not rehabbers and people are going to promise you this and I'll fix it for this. You want to just get a neutral inspector who's going to look and identify it and call it if he sees it. Now replacing the drywall should fix it. I don't know how many times I have heard people say, hey, if I remove the drywall and replace it with good stuff, that should fix it, right? Answer is no, no, no. There is no known cure at this time for Chinese drywall. Remediators, cutting and trimming and gutting and ripping and tearing, and the stuff is coming back uh, six months later. You have to remember that the bad stuff is not the drywall. That had the gas in it. It's the gas that travels throughout the house. And what does gas do? It absorbs into anything porous. So what's porous in your home? Carpet, carpet pad, insulation. What about wood? Is that, in, is that porous? If I pumped a bunch of gas into a plywood of wood, would the wood not absorb that gas? The flooring, what about the concrete? These houses down here built in the year of Chinese drywall are all coated houses, concrete block with about 20% of the house being a wood roof, the rest all being concrete block. If it's getting in the concrete and emanating from the concrete, how is ripping out drywall going to protect it? Not to mention all the metal in the home down to the last screw you'd have to replace because there's oxidation going on there. Truth is there is no known cure at this time that has successfully stopped the gases from coming back. So how do you neutralize a gas? Well, your guess is as good as mine. They don't have one yet. So here's the evidence. I'm going to show you some pictures of what drywall looks, Chinese drywall evidence looks like. And I'm going to show you two different pennies here. All right. This one is a brand new shiny penny. No expenses spared here. All right. Brand new. That's what copper looks like when it's just brand spanking new. And this is like a six, seven-year-old penny. And I'm trying to get a little reflective there. But it looks a little used, a little darker, right? Well, that's what copper should look like in a six-year-old home. Not that. If you see that and the house is six or seven years old, you got a problem. Someone's trying to probably pass off a Chinese drywall home as a normal home because they stripped all the wiring back. So first of all, what people do is they take out the plugs in a wall and they look at the grounding wire. Now, these wires are all filled with uh, or covered uh, sheaths. Uh, but there is a grounding wire, and you really can't make it out too well here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. But this shows black. When you wipe your finger across it, it's greasy. It gets on your fingers. It's a little on the blacky side. Uh, and then that copper wire is black. That's the first thing you look at. I usually pull out a couple plugs when I'm in the house just to make sure. Now, on the refrigerator, if you want to go back and look at the uh, the compressor behind on the refrigerator there is a copper pipe that has the things that make the things cool in your refrigerator and you can see shiny not so shiny and look at the difference in what that looks like see that's black jet black you can even see a hint of the copper that used to be there that's starting to oxidize all right that picture didn't really come out too well. The air-conditioned air handler that's up in the attic, you can pop the plates. You can look for also things that are coppery, and you'll see little black dots or the black corrosion on it, as well as the main electrical panel. When you pop that out, and I don't know if you can really see, but these are all copper wires right here that run into it, and this has somewhat of a blackened look to it. Again, you can wipe your fingers over it. Of course, just make sure the breaker's off or you'll electrocute yourself. All right, this is a good one here. The air conditioning condenser. Uh, I mean, sorry, uh, the air conditioning Freon tube that comes out of the unit and up. couple things I look for here. One, you can tell, you can't even tell where the black of this tube is and that black is. I mean, this is really bad. Uh, that's what it should look like. And that's, of course, shiny. It wouldn't look like that. But if you go into one and you see it super, super shiny, um, you want to look for the joints. Now, from the factory, there'll be one joint in this tube that uh, it all should be. From this up until the into the roof, you'll see it go. And that should have one soldered joint to it. What Chinese drywall 
renovators do is they clip it. But the pipe already has one solder joint. Well, they can't make it fit. So they'll have to put a second solder joint on there. So you always look for one solder joint on the this to kind of try to identify if someone's trying to pass this off as a normal home. Now, if you go into the air condenser coil in the garage, you'll notice that, let's see if we can zoom in there. Those are condenser coils. And what you should see is the rust. Their condenser coils got evaporation and metal and water make things rust. Rust is fine, but look at that six-year-old penny compared to that. That is black as black can be. These are overwhelming evidence of some houses I took some pictures at. And that's a close-up of it. The rust is fine, but that's black. Black, black, black. And just to really differentiate, there's a shiny penny next to it. I mean, that does it. not even close to copper. Uh, at all. You don't even see any evidence of copper in that one. And then down here, I can't really tell too much on this one, but you can go into the air handler as well, and there's a, a, a fuse in there, and you can look at the wirings there. You can even pop over the uh, thermostat and look at some of the copper solders there. But I go underneath the sink. Now, what are you looking for? Well, a lot of this is PCV, uh, P, CPVC piping, which is a plastic piping. But this right here, these two little things that go right into the hot and cold water are copper. And you can tell they're black and compared to the shiny. Again, if I see shiny, I'm kind of indicating a problem. Another one is black and copper valves and fittings under the sink, as well as if you go to your washer and dryer area, you'll see these, tu these tubes right here. You want to look at those because those usually look like that. They actually will turn, uh, look shiny in a newer home. But even if they look like that, that's okay. And then this, although it looks like copper and everything's good, there are some evidence, it didn't turn out too well in the picture, of some black dotting, which is the start of oxidation. Now, another one I go into, now this is all the stuff that I usually do, just start to visual inspect to say, oh, this got Chinese drywall people. I'm not a home inspector, I can't call it, but I can actually say, I see evidence here, and then you decide if you want to move forward. I go to the tubs. Now, if I really zoom into this tub here, you can see the kind of the pitting. Now, a lot of that people think that's water stains, and a lot of chances they're right. But if you take this nozzle right here and pull it up, you'll see the bar into it, and that's where you see a lot of the black. Also, in these grooves here on the bottom of the tub where the drain is right there. Look at that. That's good. That, come, that came out really well in the picture. And then even where you can see the granite and everything else, that soap dispenser they put at the sink, it's got that black pitting to it, which is the start of oxidation. Again, water stains sometimes look like Chinese drywall. You want to know what you're looking at and what you're seeing. Now this, I'm going to show up a dime. Wow, I'm really good. Splurging here. And that is actually like the trim around of a medicine cabinet mirror and you can see that that is black and that should look like that but instead it looks like that and of course if you had a anything in the place which most of these houses are empty these bank owned things out there but that has some black residue to it and then of course this would look more like a horse with the shiny part to it which i rubbed off right here which you can see the difference between that and that and that's got some black tinging to it so that's chinese drywall uh when you're in the attic and most inspectors do this but you don't have to in every home we look for the visual evidence that's the name of the company it was the main contributor of it but it can also say tng and it can say china but not all the times it says china uh, there's board that says KNAUF on it that you look for as well. And then uh, a couple little notes about it. You know, he act then when they first made this report, they were wondering, is it toxic? And now the reports are coming out that it is. Sulfide gas is toxic. That not the plant that produced the drywall has no insurance. Here's the major problem with Chinese drywall. Um, the insurance agents, when you have a claim, say something is wrong. When you have a claim, the insurance company is going to call pollution exclusion. You cannot get insurance against pollution damage to the home. 
So just understand that about Chinese drywall. It's really nasty stuff. This is just another service we provide here at Villa Realty with myself at Zoller. We are going in these homes and as you're looking at the home to see it's a perfect fit and the kitchen's nice and the appliances are there and the bedrooms are the right size for you. I'm in there with screwdriver and set to try to identify any kind of evidence to tell you um, that this has a potential of it and of course you can still make the decision to go after it or not i just highly recommend that we don't go after a chinese drywall home uh, because of the ramifications to it so i hope this helped you out this explained a little bit about chinese drywall I look forward to meeting you uh tours are uh, open throughout the summer a great time if you watch the market update you know that anytime between april and september are the best times to come down not the best time for weather but best time to get yourself a great deal give me a call it's 239-980-2792 thanks bye